Happy second day of Hanukkah. It's Rabbi Gary's Zweig and him here going on the way to Rachel's tomb. And we're doing the morning service, the Shachris. It's beautiful because this is, Rachel was buried on the road to Ephrata, right near Bethlehem. Talk about security. You've got enough security here. She was buried because they thought she'd be alone. And you can bet they're not, she's not gonna be alone. There's be hundreds, even thousands of people visit her almost every day. And it's an amazing thing to see. We're gonna go, I think it's the third holy place in Israel and all your prayers can be answered. We're gonna go there now. We'll show you afterwards, thank you. Walls are constructed like a Jerusalem stone, the same as the Kotel, as you see. It's not from that time, but it makes it look the same as the Kotel. The Rachel Tomb bus here, it says El Fahim Rabim Nosim the Yoshua. It's a, it's a beautiful bus here. It's obviously taking people here to Davening. I, I, I presume some people come here every morning. We came here at 6.30, we were late because sunrise is around 6.30. The prayers will start around 6 o'clock. And as you can see, it's a, it's a happening place. So um, just as it uh, worked out that way, it saves us time. and. It's, it's, it's a wonderful experience to see Rachel's tomb. And here it says, right in the Torah in Genesis, in Bereshit, they journeyed from Beth El, and there was still a stretch of land to Ephrat, when Rachel went into labor and had difficulty in her childbirth. Thus Rachel died and was buried in the road to Ephrat, which is Bethlehem. Jacob set a monument on her grave. It is the monument over Rachel's grave until today. permits that need to be taken to get these things but this is a bent up demand people need housing people need to live somewhere and these houses you see they're bigger than you would get in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv because there's more area to build okay over here is um, Beitar Elite one of the fastest growing communities it's Haredi and they have you know they produce kids there that's what they do there's 70 over 75,000 people there's probably 75,002, 75,004. They have people growing all the time. Over here is Rosh Surim, the beautiful place to be. And over here, behind them is the Lone Shvud. This is the home for lone soldiers, built in memory of my son Yitzhak who was murdered by a terrorist the day before he was to be inducted. Wow. He was very much looking forward to going to the army. He wanted to be a, a sergeant, and uh, th this is a, um, a memorial to him. It's a beautiful home that was built for boys who don't have a, a home to go back to while they're serving in the army. Um, it's, uh, there, it was inhabited first a year ago in uh, 2021, before Rosh Hashanah, a boy from Ukraine moved in, and since then, 11 other boys have moved in. One from, uh, and one from France, and quite a few Israeli boys, some from families who are not able to, uh, to uh, 
take care of them for whatever reason, for economic reasons or health reasons, whatever. And some from Haredi families who uh, don't welcome their children home because they go to the army. Mm. And uh, the boys feel very much at home. They're very happy here. They tell me many times that it's really a home to them and they're ha- uh, they love coming back to it. And uh, we've put a lot into building it and we still have a lot to do. And, uh, and we're very thankful for it. <laughs> Yitzchak was my son's name. He was 19 years old. And he would work for some money. And uh, he would go out. We had an old jalapi car he used to take. And uh, he would buy things for soldiers from different outposts and bring it to them. This is the kitchen you can see. It's in two different sizes, and they'll flesh it. All the boys here are Shomer Shabbos. They're all, they all keep Shabbos, the religious boys. And this is uh, the living room. Yeah, the living room, yes. And two other boys are commemorated here. One was a lone soldier, a Canadian lone, you know, lone soldier. His name was Yehuda uh, Friedberg. He was a lone soldier here in this, in this kibbutz. Quite many years ago, he was killed also in 1993. And the, the boy on the left is a, a man who lived here, a father of a family here who lived in, in Rosh Surim, the kibbutz that this, uh, that this home is in. Yes. And uh, yeah, so these are pictures of them. The middle yes. one is the one of my son. Here we are in the Lone Soldiers, and I can see that they really learn how to relax because they have one of those relaxing games that's billiards. And I'm going to see if my luck is good with uh, Ezra and Sharon here, and let's see if I can get them. Let's see if I can do anything about this. Well, there you go. That's a lucky day here. Okay. It's also beautiful. Uh, the beautiful rooftop. Yeah. This, this has to be In Israel, they use everything with the solar panels, I believe. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Beautiful. It saves a lot of money. And Those that are, that are freezing in uh, Toronto, New York, Boston, Philadelphia, don't go south. Go east. Go to Israel. <laughs> yeah, we'll be over here. Okay. You say yeah, yeah, these are donations that were given, that, the gifts that were made by students at uh, high school. From uh, high school? You saw Preschool. The, you saw the, yeah, from elementary school. Mm-hmm. These are things that they, they packages they make for the soldiers to give them a warm feeling how much they're loved and how much they're appreciated for the wonderful work they're doing. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. Here we were just in a lone shvut, seeing the lone soldiers of home, and now we're in a place called Ha Chish. It's officially an outpost of a lone shvut, and apparently it was populated by many Peruvian Jews, converts that came here. It's very poor, as you can see, but there's a lot of things here that are growing. Apparently, this will be now legalized soon so that they can get different things and get connected, more connected to launch food. It's just, I don't know, maybe 200 meters away from a launch food, but it's a lot of things you don't know about, a lot of things you don't hear about, but it's a, this is the Beit Knesset, as we see right here, and um, beautiful day. We're going to go right inside the Beit Knesset, take a look. The door is open. Look at that, it's open, wow. Beautiful shul here. One thing there's no lack of is shuls and minions, that's for sure. I'm going to say a little prayer. Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Adonai, Echad. Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Adonai, Echad. Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Adonai, Echad. Beautiful place. Look at this beautiful shul. Zehashar, Lashem, Sarikim, Yavuvo. Got some new chairs here. Look at that. They just obviously are just in time for Hanukkah. Here's some beautiful uh, books here. Bishvil Haaretz, all in Hebrew. We're going to the Arifold lookout. This is the picture of Arifold, who was a real hero. And I guess Hanukkah is a time of heroes, so it's very, very apropos we're seeing him. On the other side is some other heroes, which you all heard about those three children that were uh, teenagers, Gilad, Ayel, and Naftali. This is the O's of the Gaon Forest, which they made a beautiful thing about. 
um, in their memory. So we're honoring those people, those real heroes. And uh, we should see it as experience. Oz Vagon is a, it's a place to come from all over Israel to hear about how they're developing the areas and they're doing things. And uh, it is really a really big tourist site for people to see what's going on. Okay, here we are in the Ari Fold Lookout. For those who don't know, Ari Fold was a very famous uh, guy. He was a strong guy. He was well equipped and um, a real hero of Israel. He would tell people how to defend themselves, etc. He was killed because he tried to stop a terror attack, a woman being stabbed at a falafel stand in Gush Etzion. We're in the, um, the lookout, in his memory. There's a uh, bracha over there, I believe. There's uh, Gush Etzion, Kfar Etzion, etc. And look at all those little fields where stuff is being built. There's a lot of road construction, as you can see. It's all for the betterment of, um, of people coming here. And uh, look, look how nice it is just to see this. Uh, here is, right in front of us is Highway 60. It's called Derek Avot. It goes all the way south from Beersheba, all the way north to Shechem. This is the, the road the patriarchs used to take, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. I guess you could say it's the oldest street in the world, older than Young Street for sure. And at no point do I feel unsafe. I don't. I feel it's very well protected, as as we just explained. It's God's country. There is people wandering around, etc., all the time. Since the roads will be expanded and there's stoplights, it'll be less hazardous. So this is something really you should see, and they're always improving it. And um, also, we're going to walk down now as we go down this little pathway here and see the. Uh, Arifold Lookout, okay? There's a hand railing here. You can see it here. I presume there's groups here that get to speak what goes on. A lot of people. Here's a little explanation thing of, uh, of uh, English, and here's Hebrew. Let's hear the English. Right, touch it right here. Hear what it says. Shalom, and welcome to the Arifold Lookout in the Oz Vegaon Nature Reserve. You are now standing at one of the highest lookouts in the country, almost 1,000 meters above sea level. In front of you spreads the Valley of Bracha in all its majesty. Its Hebrew name means blessing, and so it is. Orchards, almond groves, and vineyards are planted in the fertile soil near its many refreshing... It's, it's beautiful and we, we, it's worth a drive here and we're here with uh, Joshua Kleiman and we've sung such a bracha here. Uh, apparently Rabbi Goldstein made this yeshuv many many years ago and um, he made this yeshuv many years ago and now his son takes it over, took it over and uh, I think now is more than Elif the Fashot, more than a thousand people. It's really growing up, it's a lo long drive to get here but it's worth the drive. Okay, so welcome to Meitzan. Thank you very much. I'm very Thank happy you that you came here. Thank you very much. It's and, worth the drive. Yeah, to support us. And uh, here we have a nice man here, Yoshua. He's already a few years living here. I understand you are the son of the founder of the Diaspora Shiva, Rabbi Goldstein. Yeah, correct, correct, right, right. So are there some original people that are still here from the original founding? Yes, okay. yes. We are from 1984. Wow. And there's a few families still. One of them is uh, your friend Yosef Ponak, yes. which I understand you're going to go to visit him. Hopefully. And uh, so he's also here from the original families. Yes. Um, but you can count them by the hand <laughs> how many we made here the whole time. But, but definitely we built the place and, uh, and, it's, growing and it's growing fast. So we have the big schus. I have to ask, this, I have to ask this question because you're mm -hmm. part of the, the Giborim, the soldiers of Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. How are our quote-unquote cousins doing uh, in the area? Do you find, is it secure, is it this? How no, I you... feel it's very secure. Good, good to know. Very secure, for a few reasons. Mm -hmm. One, that Hashem protects us, that's a lot of burden. Second thing, it's a Torah community, yes. so the Torah protects us also. Wow. And the third thing is, we have no real Arabs exactly living around us. It's a little further away, so we're on top of a mountain. Wow. So it's a little more secure. And we have the army base here also. Three good reasons, four good reasons. Yeah. Yeah. And 
briefly, there is a story about Hanukkah connected to the Tzad, is that correct? Where the Maccabees used to be? They, the yeah, they, they, they used to hide in, in, the, in, the, in the mountains. Uh, and also King David used to uh, hide in the mountains. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah. And on a, on a regular weekday, how long does it take to get from here to Yerushalayim by car or by bus? How long would it take? Yeah, by car, uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the entrance of Yerushalayim is like 30, 25, 30 minutes. But oh, wow. yeah, but if you want to get inside, today there's traffic and everything, and sometimes even that can take longer even to get in. depends on the traffic. Mm-hmm. used to be once less traffic. In 84, when we came here, there wasn't so much traffic. Okay. Today is much more. And there are plans to build more in Mitzad, to like make it a bigger community? Yeah, they're, they're building now 250 homes, and, uh, and uh, so we'll double in size and more, yeah. And hopefully you'll have maybe a visitor center or something to explain to people coming? I mean, yeah, maybe. Do something? Yeah, yeah, we'll have to do something, good. yeah. There's a lot in place we need here. So, like you see, uh, there's a lot of uh, olive trees in a, very close to the fence. So, because the Arabs uh, saw that the Meitzah they started, uh, started to build, so they came very close to the fence and, uh, and put trees. That way, uh, Meitzah can grow. For Arabs, are very, very, very far. They're not like you see all these mountains, nothing, no, no trees, no nothing. Uh, but because because the Meitzah built, so the Arabs came closer and put their trees. But uh, Baruch Hashem, we continue, and Bezat Hashem here would be a new winery. winery. They, they're uh, they're uh, fixing it up, and uh, there's a bit Knesset outside and building uh, some new houses out of the fence. Bezat Hashem, we, would, we, we won't be a fence about, uh, in the new houses. That way the Arabs can come close and we could we go and build more Bezat Hashem. No, Over there on the mountains, you could see there's a Chava. It's a farm, there's a sheep. There is a, it's a young guy, he learned, when he learned in yeshiva and then he, over there far, and then he opened a farm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here, you, if it's, you can't see really good, but over there you see uh, Dead Sea, Yama Melach. Wow. And also, if you see, there's a, also a few uh, caravans on the mountain down, that's also a, a, a guy from Pnei Kedem. He built a farm and then he went much, much inside. Uh, is in the uh, build an, uh, also 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 over there another farm that way uh, to to try to keep keep our land from Arabs coming because Arabs started to come <coughs> with the tractors and started to to take the land to use it for uh, to to take it that it's a really it's land of Israel it's at Mot Medina it's a it's a land of uh, of uh, Israel. Uh, over there, there's a, it's a few, you see a few caravans, it's a guy, he, he built a, a farm, farm over there for sheep, and uh, that way, you know, you, we know the Arabs can, can come, and the sheep, when you walk with them to take food, slow, so you, you keep, you keep uh, seeing what's going on, and if you, we go there, we see Arabs are building, building all the time, and trying to block us, so if, if we build over there, so you, we know they won't come very close to our Yishuv, they would stay uh, far away. It's a guy from Pnei Ken, and also it's a farm. It's a land of Israel, land at Mot Medina, and Arabs use, uh, uh, started to, to use it, to, to put trees, to put, uh, like to catch it. So we, he, he built a farm over there, it's hard and it's scary, Arabs come sometime, a few fights, but Baruch Hashem, it's a building and it's going on good. The name of this shul today is Bet Knesset Ramchal. The first night we, we built it, it was the yard side of the Ramchal. Ramchal is a, every, the most famous book of the Ramchal. It's a Yarav yeah, Chaim Lutzato, Moshe Chaim Lutzato. And the most famous book of it is Mesilat Yesharim, but he has lot, lots of books, uh, Kabbalah, and uh, lots of. So th- that's the name of, uh, of this shul uh, uh, now. And maybe someday it will change the name. And uh, slowly, slowly the building. Uh, if if we uh, they have more money, they continue slowly, slowly. And if they we go, have, uh, they have uh, service every day. They have minyan. So now in the last few weeks or months, so my my brother, the other brother, he opened a yeshiva over over here. Wow. I see now they they're not here. I don't see their cars. They're learning here every morning and afternoon. And uh, yeah, for for guys that came from yeshivas, but they li- like the. F- Yes. Yeah,
Mm -hmm. So one one of the uh, guys that uh, got killed over there, yes. his name is Yaakov Elchanan Skakovsky. Yes. He used to come to, to the farm. He was a, a yeshiva bocher, and he, he used to come to help. And uh, uh, every night we need to be awake all the night, for, uh, seeing that Arabs can come and uh, steal the sheep. Mm -hmm. So he used to come, and uh, the farm was in the beginning was here. So so now they shoot, uh, put some money, and slowly, slowly we're building it. I'm also helping to. It's called Bustan Yaakov. There will be trees and uh, and a uh, place to sit uh, for people coming. And uh, on his name, Yaakov Chanan Skakovsky. Wow, it's beautiful. Yeah, Bustan Yaakov, yeah. Wonderful. It's, it's exciting. It's great to be part of this miracle. And uh, look at all empty spaces and stuff. You can't see it unless you come here. Because you. Um, right there? Yeah. What are we looking at? This is the issue, it's Pnei Kedem. Pnei Kedem, it's the other issue. It started for like Meitzat Bet, the second Meitzat, but because it was very hard for uh, uh, to be new people, so the Matzah gave it to like Meitzat, that's uh, Haredi, and, uh, and uh, Pnei Kedem, it's more Mizrahi. So it's, uh, it's another issue, it's our neighbors. And they also And Yoshua is a great tour guide. And maybe, maybe, we don't know, but maybe the Maccabees or King David drank from this well. They used to hide in caves around here, this we do know. And apparently this is um, so important to come here. So the neighbors come here. Okay, so we're going to throw a stone in here to hear how long it takes to get there, okay? There it is, so it's very deep. far away, very deep. And people just come to use this as a drink of water, or just uh, for now the sheep? It's, really, now it's like a fight about the, the land. Oh like, God. Arabs can come here, and then the Jews, Jews and they stare up because they see the Jews take care about this place. Yes. And then the Jews come, and the army, you know... Wow. Trying, we're trying to keep this place. Like you see here, over there, over here, came lots of kids and uh, people from from the Yishuvim. They said, let's build here a, a place to sit, to stuff. The Arabs came, like you see, tear it up, break it. They see we we want to start to use this place, so we, they try to to block us. Yeah. And if you want, you want, to, we could walk over there. We could go. Yeah, so over here, there's in this area, there's uh, some caves, and this, this, it says, it's, I think in Sefer Maccabim, that the, they had a, a very strong milchama down, like in the mid a war, uh, down near Yamamelach, uh, Dead Sea, and then afterwards they went, like uh, they run, run back and, uh, to the mountains. And they say they, they stayed here, there's here a cave, and this area, there's a few caves, even nicer. You could see the uh, I would say like the Adam Mezuzah, yeah. Adam Mezuzah, wow. and the uh, and the uh, petach and the and the door, and over here with this this water that way they could drink and could use it, and uh, like everything now the Arabs all the time we are in a fight fight. If they the Holy Rav okay. that, uh, first of all, that's incredible. I remember people used to have these things. Yes, okay. It's a video camera. Yes, that's yes, really yes, cool. Yes, yes. Um, that there's a bracha that was, uh, you know, instituted by Ezra and Nehemiah thousands of years ago for after we would be exiled from the land, return to the land, wow. and then you arrive at a place that was barren and desolate and empty and has since been built up and is thriving and flourishing and green and beautiful which our mountain Baruch Hashem Adonai Elohim Melech Olam Metziv Metziv Gvul Gvul Almana Almana Amen Amen It's fantastic, a great work you're doing here Thank you Do you want to just take a few steps with me? Sure, sure. please, yes, of course it. Please show us what you're doing
the hills of Judea where it's uh, rocks and stones, which uh, you have to see it because it is a miracle to, uh, to behold. Uh, it's uh, amazing how these, peop these people, they manage here by themselves. This fellow from Texas, he's building things in each place, each town has its own um, theme, I guess you could say. Okay, we're at Arugot Farms, and here's an ecological pool for uh, fish and uh, just a place to relax. And um, it's not for swimming, but uh, apparently just beside it here, they're building a hotel, which they haven't had have the funds yet for. Here's palm trees. I guess a nice place to relax. And uh, water is a very precious, uh, valuable item here. Uh, it's probably more important than anything else than gasoline or money just to have water. There it is. Okay. Shalom. Mm -hmm.